This chair came into my shop a couple weeks ago and looked it over and I thought this might make for an interesting project. So I'll get out my tools and tear it down and see what's inside. We just got to love our kitties. Pets are good for business. There's an absolutely ridiculous amount of staples shot in this chair. We've got them side by side all along the cording plus clustered up in the cardboard strip. Layer after layer, this horrible saturation of staples continues. This is just really crazy. It took three hours to pull the staples out of this fabric. I'll work with this padding and try to keep it intact as I pull it out. Well, it doesn't appear that the seat was originally buttoned, so I'm just going to com completely rebuild it. Well, all right, I'll take this into the other shop and refinish the legs. I'll dob this on and Set it aside and let it work for about 15 minutes and wash it away. I'll use a nylon brush to clean these carvings. I'll scrub this down with lacquer thinner and clean away any of the remaining stripper. All right, that's ready for aniline dye. After the solvents evaporated and the wood was dried out nicely, I used a red scotch bright pad and buffed this all down, polished up the surface. I'll use a water-soluble brown mahogany aniline dye to bring out this color. I don't like to subject my camera to varnish over spray, so I didn't film the finishing process. I sprayed two coats of polyurethane on the legs uh, according to instructions on the can, and I'm ready to move ahead. All of the spring work still looks good in this chair. Somebody's added this rope. It's not hurting anything, so I'll go ahead and cover it up with this sagless webbing.
I'm going to use just a few temporary staples. Hold this deck pad in place while I fit it to the frame. I'm leaving just a slight overhang on these edges. I'll wrap this deck pad up in two layers of cotton. I'll have to trim away some excess in the corners. This um, slip piece helps hold things in place much better. I'll push some cotton into this shallow area right here along this arm support. All right, that evened up pretty nicely. That's going to pull down great. The very first step in laying out fabric is squaring up the cat. I'll line up my centers and put a few temporary shots in here. Straight line across the back. I'll match up centers on the front and push this padding back in and towards the frame. And I'll snug this down. These will be temporary shots for a while also. With the fabric snugged front to back, I need to make these cuts here. I've got it squared up with that arm rail. And I need to stop considerably short because these have to go down into the crevice. Let's cut them a little bit and we can always go more. with the tucking tool. I'll snug this down and fill in these shallow spots with cotton. Work my way around to the back. With the back all pulled in place, I'll start readjusting this front profile.
I'll tighten up this shallow area right here and work my way to the front. Need to tear back the slippies a little bit and remove some cotton. I knew there'd be a little excess right here on this corner. I'll work with it and pull this all down evenly. I'll finish off this corner by finding an equal balance of fabric on this corner. Pull it down tight. and work with these until I get them even. Good to keep a regulator at hand. Okay, not bad. I need to measure out for this band that goes around the front. Looks like 54 inches. Oh, better go six. And I'll have to allow for this taper going downward. I need to be conservative with this fabric and bias cut cording wastes a lot of material. So I'm going to start by cutting two pieces. Because this fabric is directional, I need to mark the ends and make sure that I match them up properly. I went ahead and made inch and three quarter inch wide strips for my outside trim. I'll lay out my six inch strip and then measure out my allowance for the taper along the side. Working off center, I'll measure out for my corner placement, then lay out the one inch fall along the side. I'll match up the opposite ends and sew these together on a bias. I got my machine set at a small stitch. I reset my machine to a large stitch size to sew the cording. We'll use the regulator along this front edge and push some of this stuffing up that's sagged a little too much over the edge. Trying to keep this nice and rounded though. I'll match up my corner references and staple this band across the front.
I opened up the sewing so that I can trim away this excess cord. Eliminate the bump right here at this intersection. I'll drop on a strip of slippies before I put the cotton down. It allows that to pull over a lot more smooth. Put that cotton right along my cardboard strip. All right, this is ready to pull down. I'll use my regulator to work the cotton up into the corner. Push it down against the cardboard strip. Okay, that'll go down nice. I'll use a regulator and drag it across this slip ease and keep the cotton in place. I've never been a fan of double welt for trimming out exposed wood, so I don't have any gimp on hand, so I'm going to make my own flat trim. I'll start with this scrap of bias cut fabric, and I'll lay out one inch plus an additional three eighths. Spray this with a coat of adhesive and set aside a minute or so to cure. After this sets up a little bit, I'll fold this back along the one inch line. I'll turn this around and bring the three eighths inch side over stopping just short of the other side. All right, that's going to pull out pretty nicely. All right, that's a wrap on this seat. Time to move on with the back.